Today on Cabela's Deer Gear TV, we take a look at the exciting world of bow hunting and what it means to us. We check out some essential gear from the blackout lineup. And finally, we'll go on an archery hunt with Clark Windlett. All this and more here on Cabela's Deer Gear TV. Many have asked the question of why does someone bow hunt? The answer isn't always the same when given, but it's fairly common to hear comments like, I love the close-up encounters. I enjoy the pureness and solitude of it. All of those and many other answers are correct, but one of the most accepted answers is from those bow hunters who say they took up archery hunting to help expand or lengthen their time in the field, as most states allow for longer seasons and more liberal bag limits for archery hunters. I love the deer hunt. And I don't care what I deer hunt with. You know, handgun, a rifle, muzzleloader, shotgun, crossbow, you know, vertical bow, whatever it may be. I've just been captivated by it. And, and I've, I've been so blessed and fortunate to hunt all over the place. And bow hunting is a huge early season passion of mine. You know, generally for me, I, I grab my bow a lot from September through the end of October because that's just kind of a traditional time a lot of people bow hunt. Doesn't mean I don't bow hunt at other times of the year, but that is a really a big time where I'm, I'm grabbing my bow. And I can vividly and fondly recall so many of my bow hunts. You know, a bow hunt in Texas where I was at full draw watching a deer come walking by in a tree stand along, along a creek called Lindsay Creek actually. And the deer's coming out and I, I'm at full draw and we're literally trying to get a slow motion shot with an arrow and the deer comes by and I, I let it fly and hit the deer and he runs off perfect and you know we're able to capture this epic shot in slow motion that's, that's, that's hard to do which is you know the camera guy is an integral part of the hunt too and we're all excited about it. Uh, you know other hunts where I've been up high in tree stands field testing brand new products like the Garmin Zero that came out and literally had got the sight the day before and now I'm drawn on a, on, a, on a beautiful chocolate antler buck and and you know the deer's out there posing get the shot and, and you know we're, we're, while we're field testing a brand new product that hadn't even been released to the market I've, now I've got a, a, an incredible trophy I mean to just simply practicing in my backyard just just shooting my bow hearing that thwack of the target just that whole deal the, the watching first timers take their uh, take their very first deer, you know, being in the stand with them, watching that emotion, seeing that excitement, seeing that look of wonderment on their face when they when they take that shot and, and you know, and then also enjoying the quest that other people have gone through. I mean, I look back on Kevin's first times deer hunting. I mean, it was a quest. I mean, we had a whole series called The Quest out of watching him bow hunt. You know, I've been blessed to spend time with good friends many, many times over shooting big bucks and small bucks and does and watching bow hunting evolve and, and, and the enjoyment of it. And that's why when it comes bow season anywhere, when you grab that bow and you've been practicing for a long time and you're preparing, you're gearing up for that hunt, it's such a cool moment. The downside of all this is that some bow hunters will look at gun hunters over high-held snobbish noses. We don't feel that way at all and believe in and support all forms of hunting since at the end of the day, if it's legal and sporting, then it should be done. Bow hunting, hunting with crossbows and handguns are all simply a closer range refinement of pursuing deer with a rifle, but it's no better or worse in any means or method. At its best, bow hunting is a great way to lengthen your time in the field, supplementing, or in some rarer cases, replacing the sport you presently enjoy with a firearm. Surveys indicate over 75% of bow hunters and crossbow hunters are also gun hunters. These so-called two-season or three-season hunters have discovered they can get extra white-tailed deer tags by taking up extra ways to hunt. Not only can you enjoy long pre-gun bow hunting seasons in many areas, you can also scout for upcoming gun seasons with a bow in your hand and one or more extra archery-only deer tags in your pocket. If you enjoy practicing in your backyard after work, tinkering with gear, learning more about various items, and dialing it all in while pursuing whitetails both for the freezer and trophy room, then we highly suggest archery hunting. When we come back, we'll look at various items to help you start bow hunting. Deer Gear is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Your adventure starts here. 
Yamaha's proven off-road ATVs and side-by-side -side vehicles. Garmin Zero Bosight, leave the guesswork behind. We know if you found one crappie, you may have found a thousand. We know the joy of getting your boots back in the mud. We know the journey can be more rewarding than the destination. We know the great outdoors. We love the great outdoors. Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Stop by today for a huge savings on the gear you need and the brand you trust. Plus, free two-day shipping at BassPro.com and Cabela's.com. How do you aim a 36-yard shot with a 30-yard fixed pin at a 15-degree angle with a 7-inch holdover without moving a single pin? Easy. You get one of these. Zero. The auto-ranging digital bow sight from Garmin. While bow hunting has a specified time and season depending on the state you're hunting in, it requires almost a year-round commitment. You know, in a bow hunting scenario, you, you probably spend more time preparing in the off season than you do about any, anything else. That's not to short sight rifle hunting at all. Um, however, the muscle memory required in an archery hunt is a little greater. Um, I spend a considerable amount of time all year long really shooting. You know, I might only shoot once or twice a week in the, in the spring and early summer, but I ramp that up as I get into July and August and start to shoot five to 10 to 15 to 20, 30 times a day as I get closer. I start to spend time uh, different angles, shooting 3D targets, concentrating a little more on the heart, where the shoulders are, different parts of the, the vitals, thinking about where that arrow's gonna exit is, is, and uh, what kind of damage it's gonna do. Looking at all those different variables, starting to think about what type of broadheads uh, that I'll shoot, starting to think about everything about it from the clothing to the scent control. And, and so to me, archery hunting, honestly, is probably a little more involved than other types of hunting. That's not to discount any of them because I hunt with everything. Other recent advancements in, in archery hunting fall right to the site. Uh, you can look at the Garmin Zero, phenomenal. I mean, I, I will never forget the first days it came in and trying to learn how to set it up and the mishaps and the mis mistakes that we made, but basically we had the first one ever for a deer hunt and there was no directions, <laughs> you know, really, so we kind of learned on the fly. Now I look at its capabilities and the updates that are made to it. The simple fact that when an update comes out, you can plug it into the computer, uh, upload the information to your site, go right on back to work, all the diversity to it. Um, you know, right now I'm actually personally building a profile for an African hunt with fixed broadheads that I'll be shooting over there. But I'll also have another profile for a uh, traditional, my mechanicals that I like to whitetail hunt with. And you can store all that in there and it's at, right available at a moment's touch to be able to adjust for whatever you need. And so when you look at the Zero and its auto ranging capabilities, whether you're stalking, whether you're blind hunting, whether you're up in a tree, uh, all the angle compensation and the features that are built into it, it raises hunting to another level for you as a hunter. Uh, then when you start figuring out how you're gonna pair your bow and your sight uh, with different types of arrows, different types of broadheads, how each one of them will react, I mean, that's a whole nother area that you, as an archery, you as a bow hunter, uh, get to get involved in. And, and you can elicit all types of arguments and discussions when you start talking about broadheads and sizes and the way they deploy. I mean, go to any forum out there and you're going to have 50 guys for it, 50 guys against it. That's just how it is when it starts talking about the topic of broadheads. When you start looking at how you're going to match all your archery equipment together from the arrows, the lengths you'll cut it, to the poundage you're going to be pulling, all the different accessories that you can put onto your bow, it's really important to get it fit for you. Uh, there's so many great resources out there available. You can go to your Bass Pro Shops or Cabela store, talk to some of the staff there, look at those aisles. You can do a lot of research online as well. You can look at the reviews on the Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's websites of different products. You can go to various forums and hear about other people's experiences with various products. And, but then at the end of the day, after you've done all that research, you've got to spend the time in preparation to be able to find what works best for you, what flies the best for you, what's going to perform the best in the field, 
And ultimately, at the end of the day, all of that really makes, to me personally, the experience uh, one of the most enjoyable hunting aspects uh, out there because you spend all that time getting ready and testing and dialing it all in. And when it finally comes time to go to full draw, uh, it's just a great feeling. Deer Gear is brought to you by 10 Point Crossbows. Perfection lives here. Walkers, protect it or lose it. Engel Coolers, a legend in reliability. Stealth Cam, proven. The all new Yamaha Wolverine X2. With a compact chassis, perfect for exploring tight technical terrain. An ultra quiet and smooth 850 class twin cylinder engine. And next level versatility with a 600 pound dumping cargo bed. No other side-by-side -side delivers this level of proven off-road performance. The all-new Wolverine X2 from Yamaha. As we highlight gear we use for bow hunting, let's take a behind the scenes look at Wade's bow hunting camp from a hunt he did last year in Kentucky and see what gear he brought along for this trip. Gear for this type of a hunt here, whether you're doing it staying at a lodge or you're doing it remotely like this, you need a lot of hunting clothes because you're gonna sweat through a lot this early season. Uh, you need to be able to prepare those clothes, man. Permethrin is a must out here. There's ticks, there's bugs, there's spiders, every kind of crawly cr critter that bites you lives here. I've, I've sprayed everything down as, as good as I could. One of the things we like to do is treat our clothes, treat our hunting gear. Uh, you can even treat your boat with some of this stuff here, but it's the Sawyer Permethrin, and it's designed to be able to be used multiple times over and over. You know, in that type of situation, you can wash the same clothes multiple times uh, after you've treated it and still get the benefit of it. I spray it on my boots, I spray it on all my outerwear, I spray it on my turkey gear when I'm out. Bow season, I live and die with it all the time, help keep the mosquitoes and those old ticks down. Um, you know, you want to read all the directions on there. Pay attention to all the warnings on there. Make sure you, you know, you use it the right way and you're going to get benefits off of it. I'm not saying you're still not going to find a tick, but I'm going to say you're going to eliminate and lessen the chances of, of them getting on your clothes. You know, they're going to go to your buddy that didn't use it a lot of times because, you know, he wasn't smart enough to get prepared. And uh, then when he says he found a tick, you don't even have to worry about scratching. You don't have to worry about catching the itch. You don't have to do the tick dance and looking down your pants and looking around your waistband because you know you protected yourself. So take a little tip, a little Sawyer permethrin and avoid the tick dance. You know, in a good remote hunting situation or even when you're doing a, you know, out with the family at a, a state park or anything, good coolers are gonna be a must. I mean, this ice is, you know, we've been here since Basically, I packed this cooler on Tuesday of last week, and it's Tuesday this week. We put one uh, other bag of ice in here since we got here, and you can see all the work that Angel did before we left. When we left, these things were totally full with, we had all kinds of different venison Salisbury steaks, we had venison meatloaf, now we're down to chicken and dumplings and taco chili soup, but we still got ice and everything's still cold. Of course, when you go over here behind me, you see the cameraman's digs, they're, they're not roughing it by any means. They got air conditioning and everything and a, uh, you know, refrigerator, satellite TV. You know, on this end of the camp, you see Steve and I's digs over here, but uh, that's okay. I don't have to hear snoring at all when I'm in my tent. So the tents have been very comfortable. Uh, the rain covers have been the deal because we saw rain early in the hunt and the dew every morning has been incredible. But, you know, just a little behind the scenes look at some of the things we've got set up here at the camp and how we're surviving for a week. One thing to do when there's downtime at camp between your morning and afternoon hunts is to practice shooting your bow at targets that you've brought along. Let's hear more about that from Wade. You know, when it comes to targets, um, I like to shoot a, a block type target when I'm really dialing my bow in, trying to, to aim at the exact same spot over and over because a lot of times you're going to have 
small places or points of aim on those targets and allow you to focus your aiming point. And that'll help you get your groups really tight and understand that the bow is doing everything the exact same time. I like to shoot the blackout targets. They're easy to get the arrow in and out. They've got lots of different sides to them and they're basically economically enough I can shoot one up in one year because I like to shoot a lot. When I go to a 3D target, um, once again, I, I like that part and I tend to migrate to my 3D targets of, of a white-tailed deer or any species that I'm going to be shooting at as I get closer into the time of the year that I bow hunt a lot. The reason I do that, it's very simple. It, it allows me when I'm shooting a 3D target to be precise and focused on different uh, parts of the, the, the kill zone. You know, here's where the heart is, here's where the lung is, here's where the liver are. Now I'm not saying that these deer targets are perfect and they're going to be, you know, exact every time on where the the, uh, the vitals are but it gives you a 3d aiming point without the uh, all the crosshairs and all the, the exact aiming points built in so now you as the hunter have to practice all the different angles that you may encounter while out in the field i'll even at times play a little red dot sometimes on some of my uh, uh, targets so i've got even more of a focal and an aiming point so that i can be focused on where i want to see that arrow hit while I'm thinking about where it's going to exit so that I know that I'm hitting as many parts of the vitals as I possibly can. Head on over to your local Bass Pro Shops or Cabela's to check out the blackout targets and the full blackout lineup of archery equipment. Deer Gear is brought to you by Conquest Sense, Hunting and Dog Sense, Sawyer Products, we keep you outdoors, Thompson Center, America's master gun maker. Feed your need for speed. The Nitro XRT unleashes speeds up to 470 feet per second, producing 25% flatter arrow trajectory, resulting in knock-breaking accuracy and unprecedented knockdown power. The world has never seen a crossbow this fast, accurate, and compact. The Nitro XRT from 10 Point. You know, white-tailed deer are arguably the most popular species in North America for people to, uh, you know, to hunt with, with their bows, hunt archery-wise. And uh, it is for me, it's a big passion. Uh, you know, I get to go on several, four or five different uh, dedicated archery hunts a year. Love the feeling of climbing up in a tree stand or easing into a pop-up in the dark and sitting up and getting the, the game in really close. And you, you know, everything has to be perfect. Your movements, you gotta be still, and uh, everything's got to work in your way. You got to concentrate. I mean, it's just everything has to go good when it comes to bow hunting. To wrap up this episode, we'll join Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's ambassador Clark Winlet as he goes on an archery hunt near the Perdinalis River on the edge of a wooded clearing. As Wade said, let's see if everything goes right for Clark. What's happened in that clearing is and more or less a clearing. I mean, it looks really heavily wooded when you look at it, but those deer come in there and they just chase doe. Deer like chasing doe in open ground. Those doe like being in open ground. And if they can get in some semi-open area, that's where they'll chase. And we saw a lot of rut activity in this area. You know, this hunt takes place on the banks of the Perdinalis River. It's one of the most scenic and pretty places I've ever been. The river is amazing, but just the rock and how rough this country really is. It's hard to realize how many big boulders and how thick this country is. Got cedar, got persimmon, got live oak, got post oaks. It's got a little bit of everything as far as brush go, but one thing we've learned over time is, is that it'll grow some pretty big deer. There's two nice 10 pointers that, you know, have, have kind of worked their way and they're chasing doe and, doing their thing and all of a sudden everybody puts their heads up and they look back there's no question he's no doubt mature he's got a giant neck 
He's, his horns are big, they're heavy, they're wide. I mean, it's like one look, grab your bow and get ready. I tried to hunt this deer when he was first mature, probably five years old, and had several opportunities at him, but I couldn't kill him. And then this year, I actually had one other opportunity. He comes in and he gets like 45 yards away, but where he was, he was in some thick brush. Or at first, he might have been in range, but the camera couldn't see him. And so, you know, as it turned out, I didn't get a shot at him. And man, one thing about it is when you get an opportunity, at a big deer, especially during the rut, you gotta take advantage of it. had close call after close call. I've actually seen that particular deer several several different years now. And he comes in and he comes in and he, and he doesn't give us a shot. He's just kind of working these dough. We don't have any chance and all of a sudden this other buck comes in. And when that other buck comes in, he kind of turns and he bows up on him and it brings him right around, kind of makes a circle, puts his head down and bam! <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> I was shooting a BPS blackout bow. Now, this is my first experience with a blackout. When I got that bow, it was extremely easy to tune. It, it is able to adjust to a lot of different draw lengths. So my draw length's about 29 inches. That was easy. As far as paper tuning it goes, I paper tuned it, shot bullet holes almost immediately. So that made me feel good. The cool thing about this bow is it's easy to shoot and it's fast. I've got mine set on about 62 pounds. In those eras, it's like driving tires. Here's blood right here. You see blood splattered. You see it? Tracks, you can see he's digging hard. There he is right there. Oh my gosh. Look at this deer. This is so awesome right here. Now, I'll tell you right now, this is why you hunt. Look at that deer. Gosh, that's so awesome. Gosh, I'm proud of that deer right there. I worked hard, hard to get this deer. And you know, it's why you hunt. You hunt during the rut so that something like this can show up. This deer, basically, he comes in. I had a chance at him the other day in the same basic little area but I, I never did get a shot at him. And you know, you gotta take advantage of it. When you get a chance, you gotta get him. And it worked out perfect today. Garmin Zero Sight let me see what the range was. When he started walking towards me, started posturing up on that other buck, started walking right to me. I, I range found him with my sight as I was at full draw. It gave me a pin and bam, right. That's so awesome. Get that guy. What a deer, super looking. Man, I'm proud of that deer. That is awesome. That will do it for us here on Cabela's Deer Gear TV. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Protect it or lose it. 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 Protect it 
or precise prescription eyewear. Wiley X knows there's no room for error. We meticulously craft our own prescription lenses to fit our high wrap frames. And our ANSI safety rated lenses are tested to uncompromising standards. Nothing but precise. Because precision is everything. Many said that we were just obsessed when we started, that there had to be an easier way to smoke food. As time passed, the Bradley family created a lineup of Bradley electric smokers that has made it easier for the novice or even expert chef to get perfect results every time they use it. Grab yourself a Bradley smoker and take your cooking to an all new level. We plan all year for this. We hone our skills. We have confidence in the gear we choose. We pour over thousands of images and videos. When the time comes, will you be ready? Introducing the all new 4K camera by StealthCam. Proven. What does it take to make Evercom deer scent? It takes a deer farmer who raises whitetails. It takes mixing the special blend of Evercom, testing each batch. Smells like deer. And then pouring each container. Each container is cleaned, examined, and packaged for shipping. It takes the finest deer herd and a great team of people to make the best hunting scent available. Evercom, from Conquest Scents. Want to know why the top shooting pros choose HiViz? HiViz has an enormous lineup of sights for every shooting platform possible that are clean looking and easy to mount. Improve your shooting with faster target acquisition and eliminate cross-eyed dominance. HiViz sights are the brightest out there, helping you find your target with ease no matter the shooting conditions. Choose the best, choose HiViz, and see what you've been missing. Nobody likes crawling, creepy, or flying bugs. So ward them off with Sawyer Permethrin. It's more than a repellent. This odorless spray repels and kills mosquitoes, ticks, and more than 55 other kinds of insects. Sawyer, we keep you outdoors. We demand a lot from the products that we use on our adventures around the world. When it comes to keeping things seriously cold, we rely on Angle Coolers, who have for over 50 years kept things cold. Angle Coolers, the original high-performance cooler. God, country, and the great outdoors. That's how my dad raised me. So it was only natural that I joined the United States Army. That's when I first used Trijicon. I used them again as a civilian police officer for 12 years. Now I'm blessed to hunt all over the world, and I only want the best optics on the planet. Trijicon. Dan Catlin, former U.S. Army, military police. Trijicon. Brilliant aiming solutions.